Hello everybody and welcome to the latest Epic Universe construction update. Now if you're unaware, Epic Universe is a brand new theme park coming to Universal Studios Florida and currently is set to open in 2025. It's going to be located just two miles south of Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure in Orlando, Florida. And this new park will feature brand new lands including How to Train Your Dragon, The Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Universal Monsters, and my childhood favorite, Super Nintendo World. Now, since our last visit over to the Epic Universe construction site, we've got a lot more ride testing going on, more scaffolding is coming down in various lands, and just about all the entrance portals to the park are up and close to completion. So let's not waste any time and start today's update over in the dark universe to check out the progress over there. We will start by taking a look over at the Burning Blade Tavern, which is inspired from the 1931 Frankenstein movie. And we can see the walls have gotten a paint job here and there is major progress on the windmill, which has now been painted as well. Now it's believed that this windmill, like what the name suggests, will be on fire or perhaps at specific intervals as it could have flames coming from it in sort of the same fashion over in Diagon Alley, how the dragon on top of Gringotts shoots out fire around every 15 minutes. The name and size of the building does imply that this is going to be a tavern and not a big restaurant. So seating will probably be hard to come by. And if it's busy here, we could see some outdoor seating on the right side if the inside seating is full or even if indoor seating is gonna be offered at all as we don't really know yet. Now over at the Dark Manor attraction, we can see the extended queue seems to have some more weathering and aging work done and the small building to the right is believed to be a counter service restaurant. And we saw in the last update that a building was being built in this queue area and it's believed that this is going to be a crypt, which you can see at the right in this photo, along with what appears to be a fountain being constructed to the left. In another angle of the Dark Manor attraction, we can see more of the stone wall has been completed and will probably be painted very soon. And here we can see the entrance to this attraction is going to be at the left as guests will take the walkway into the mansion. Now heading over to the Curse of the Werewolf roller coaster, we can see progress on the roof of the mid coaster launch is coming along and probably is just about completed. And in this view, we can see walkway construction for the queue and given the amount of trees in this area now, this entire area is gonna have lots of shade from all these trees that are being put into this area, which will be a very welcome addition to any queue in the hot Florida sun. And shout out to Bio Reconstruct because he's the one that gets all these photos. And he pointed out that this area here with the plywood in the Curse of the Werewolf queue looks to be perhaps the place to put this wagon that we can see in the staging area currently over at number four. Now I think that's probably a pretty good guess as it seems to fit the theming of this land. And also I don't really know where else you're gonna put a wagon in Epic Universe. Good point. Here we can see the area where it's believed that the themed tents will be as we see steel framing that is meant to look like wood, much like what we've seen over in the How to Train Your Dragon Land in previous updates. Now we can see a lot of plywood down working as a walkway for workers and equipment. Now there has been a lot of rain in the area, so this could be to prevent equipment from getting stuck in the mud and perhaps just giving workers an easier way to get around the work area without having to trudge around in mud. Here we can see one of the broken wall entrance and exit areas to the village in the dark universe. There is scaffolding, but we are able to see through it a little bit and see that the rock work is coming along nicely in this area. We can see here the state of the village and the land as it's under heavy scaffolding currently, as lots of work is being done in this area right now. Now here is the main broken wall entrance portal to the village that we've talked about in previous updates. Guests will go through this entrance area after entering the land through the main land portal. And speaking of the land's entrance portal, here is the current look of the entrance portal to the dark universe. Now, most of the work left looks to be on the semicircle entrance area as the tree is likely to be done with most of its theming as all the scaffolding, at least on the front side has come down. There is still some work going on on the back side. Now that'll do it for the progress here in the dark universe, but let's head over to the wizarding world to see the progress over here. We've seen these octagon shaped foundations in various parts of Epic Universe being built and while we're still not sure what these are gonna be used for, we can see here in the front of the Wizarding World entrance portal that there are steel frames on one of the octagons now. To me, this sort of looks like a gazebo area, so this could be a seating area with some shade, which would be a very welcome addition to a theme park given the hot sun in the summer months, especially in Orlando, but we will have to wait and see what develops with these. In the last update, we saw the beginning work on the colorful concrete area in front of the entrance portal to the Wizarding World, and it seems some progress has been made on this front, but not a lot, 
since we previously saw it. And here we can see what is likely an extended queue area for the featured attraction in the Wizarding World. Now there is no official word on what that attraction will be, but the strong rumor is that it will be a Ministry of Magic themed attraction involving elevators. Now if you want to know more about this attraction and what could be coming here, be sure to check out an upcoming video as we will break down all the rumors and potential rides in this land. And here is the progress on the copy of, I'm gonna try this again, Port St. Denis, maybe, at the entrance of the land. Now this land is going to be based off of the Fantastic Beast movies, which take place around the 1920, 1930s era in Paris. So the entire land is going to be a life-size replica of the streets of Paris in that time period. Now most of the land is still under heavy scaffolding, but we are able to get some glimpses through the scaffolding at weathering work and other details in the land starting to emerge. But the good news is we can see at the arrow where we actually have scaffolding that has been removed. So hopefully we will start seeing more scaffolding coming down in the coming weeks everywhere else in this land and really get a good look at what this land is gonna look like. Now given most of this land is still under heavy scaffolding and we just saw last week the entrance portal got its beacon added, there isn't really much else to check out over here in the Wizarding World. So let's head over to the land in which I'm most excited about, Super Nintendo World, to check out the progress over here. Now over at Yoshi's Adventure, we can see the track is full of Yoshi ride vehicles that are also uncovered for the most part, except for some wrapping and some plastic and fabric on them still, but we are able to see that they are Yoshi's on the track. Now these are all likely out because of ride testing going on. And once the ride is completed, the fencing in which you see currently around the entire outdoor track area will be removed as this track is not going to have fencing on it once completed. And we can see in this shot, the theming of Mount Beanpole is making major progress. And here we can get a glimpse of what the completed theming will look like. Now it seems most of the theming left to do on Mount Beanpole is under the Yoshi track as most of the work above it seems to be essentially done. And we can see that theming work has begun on Peach's castle with a gray base layer starting to be worked on. Now the same can be seen for Bowser's Fortress over here, which is where the entrance for the Mario Kart attraction is going to be. And here at the arrows, we can see more of those octagon shaped foundations just outside of Super Nintendo World. We can also see the entrance portal has some bricks added to it, which is a different look when compared to Japan and Hollywood Super Nintendo Worlds. So while all these lands will be very similar, there are some differences we are beginning to see in Epic Universe's version versus the other parks. Now hopping over to the Donkey Kong portion of Super Nintendo World, likely to be called Donkey Kong Country, we can see a tall frame is being built on the show building of Minecart Madness, which is the Donkey Kong roller coaster. Now this theming is going to be above the waterfall that will appear as part of the roller coaster. And over at the lift hill of the Minecart Madness, we can see workers working on the Golden Temple theming here. And here is a great view of the broken upper false track that will give the illusion that riders are jumping over broken parts of the track in the upper level, just like in the Donkey Kong Country video game where this ride gets its inspiration from. But in fact, the ride car will always be attached to a side track like you can see here in this patent filing photo that Universal has done for this ride. Here's the progress on some broken wall theming on the other side of Minecart Madness that is likely to be themed to the gold coloring like on the other parts of the ride. Now this is a great view of the elements of the ride where we can see the broken track, we can see where there will be a splashdown into the water, and we can see temporary fencing around it for ride testing purposes. With Peach's Castle and Bowser's Fortress starting their exterior theming, there isn't much else to really check out over here in Super Nintendo World at the moment, so let's head over to the Isle of Burke to check out the progress over here in the How to Train Your Dragon Land. Now over at the entrance portal to the land, we can see at one, a theming model for the rock work that is currently underway, and at two, we can see a temporary fence for ride testing purposes and a permanent fence being built that is in progress. Now this is near the roller coaster track for the How to Train Your Dragon coaster that will run all through the land. Now we can see over by the Great Hall restaurant, which will be called Mead Hall, that some framing for rock work has been added to an adjacent building in this area. Now the guesswork has been taken from this building as there is now a grog and gruel sign that can be seen on the building. So admittedly, I'm not very familiar with the How to Train Your Dragon franchise. So if you are and you know what this means, 
please let us know in the comments because I would love to know. Now here we can see the current status of the bay and it is now drained as well as the boardwalk construction seems to be almost completed. Now I was very curious in the last video if the bay was going to stay filled as it seemed some of the boats in this area that are in the water still needed theming work and I just didn't know how that would happen with water in the bay. So it seems perhaps the filling of the bay was for some sort of testing and now theming work will begin again on some of these elements. Now on a building near the entrance to the land, we can see lots of sculpted stone and timbers as well as a sign that has been sculpted at the right, which appears to be perhaps of dragons. Hard to really tell at this point, but it could be. Would make sense given this is a dragon land. It's science. Now near the second launch of the How to Train Your Dragon coaster, we can see the progress on the sculpted rock work in this area that is going to be a kid's play area. We can also see moss theming has been added to various elements around this area as well, adding some nice depth and aging look to this land. Now over at the pair of spinning dragons ride, we can see a recent concrete port nearby and we do know this ride is still undergoing ride testing as many have caught footage of it during the day and the nighttime as well. And the fencing still being up lets us know they're still testing this ride. Who knows for how long though. Now over at the first launch of the How to Train Your Dragon coaster station, we can see some netting has been added on a turn here. Now we're unsure if this is permanent or temporary, but it does have the look of being a permanent fixture. And we've also seen Universal do this on various roller coasters to protect guests as well. And at the main coaster station, we can see some theming progress on the steel beams that are being painted to look like wood. And over at the boat ride in the land, we have a roof that has been recently added to the loading and unloading station. And we can also see more moss theming around this area that again gives this land a really lived in and aged look. And over at the Great Hall restaurant that again will be called Mead Hall, we saw on our last visit what looked like a Viking that will be sculpted into the rock work. Well, now it seems there will be two Vikings sculpted into the rock work on both sides of the entrance, so they'll have buddies with them. <laughs> now this is the current state of the rock work that is on top of the Mead Hall restaurant. Now unsure of what this is supposed to be. And again, I don't know a lot about the How to Train Your Dragon franchise, but it seems to me that perhaps this is going to be a dragon perched up on some sort of rock, perhaps. But you don't know. If you know what this could be, please, again, let us know in the comments. Now, there isn't much else to report over here on the How to Train Your Dragon land. But let's head over to the center of the park and check out Starfall Racers and the progress over there. Now, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of progress on the colorful pattern walkway in the entrance area here, but there is now a protective covering on the current work that is going on, as there is work going on on the roof of the main station here, so it could be for that reason. And like we just said, roof work is still ongoing on the main station here as well, as work on the main theming element is as well, but it's really hard to see how much in the way of progress is being made as it's under rather heavy scaffolding at the moment. Now this isn't much of a progress pick, but it's a cool shot where we can see the coaster has a lot going on and we can see where the tracks will come in and out of the main station. Personally, I'm not a roller coaster person, but I can see how roller coaster fans will very much look forward to this ride. Now staying in the park center, we can see the large fountain near the in park hotel has been painted with varying shades of blue and perhaps turquoise as well. Now around the fountain viewing area sections, there are concrete forms being constructed for an upcoming concrete pour that looks to be part of the viewing area foundation as well. Now, sometimes it's easy to gloss over this, but this fountain is absolutely massive. As we can see workers in this view to really give us some scale here. Now we don't know if this is going to be the park icon, but if it is, it would make sense as again, this is going to be massive and more than likely very much part of a nighttime fireworks show or some sort of entertainment done on a nightly basis would be my guess. And here's the current progress on a play fountain or perhaps splash pad area for kids near the large fountain, also very close to the constellation carousel nearby and just for an idea of where this fountain is located and kind of maybe to get your bearings if you're unfamiliar with maybe where everything is you can see in this view you have entrance portals to the dark universe the wizarding world and how to train your dragon and you also can see the entrance to starfall racers now over by the domes that will be constellation carousel we can see at one the splash pad construction we just mentioned a moment ago at two is sand being placed over the underground circulation and filtration plant for all the water features in the central corridor of the park. And at three, we have circles that are likely to contain trees. 
and four, we have more of those octagon foundations we keep seeing all over the park. Now, while it seems the last few updates that not much progress has been made over on Constellation Carousel since we saw that single panel installed, and still, that is the only panel that has been installed, but with all the workers in this area, we know that there is work happening over here. Sometimes you just can't always see it, but I'm very excited to see what this ride will end up looking like. And here we can see what will be a primary cross park walkway through the center of Epic Universe that will go between two water features. And here we can get a really good view of water features in this central area. Now there's a cascade of water down the hill at the center here, along with the Waterside restaurant that we've talked about in previous updates, where guests here will be able to get a fountain show while enjoying their meal. And the large upper pond was prepared several weeks ago with plumbing for some elaborate fountains. All right, staying in the main central area here, let's hop over real quick and check out the entrance portal progress to Epic Universe. Now, last time we visited this area, we saw that concrete forms were still curing, but we can see that it is out of its mold. And now we have the entrance portal to the entire park set up. Now, I'm curious how this is going to end up looking when compared to the concept art here, because this type of entrance really wasn't depicted in the concept art, but I do like how they're being consistent with all the entrance portals having a very similar look all over the park. The entire entrance plaza is starting to come together as well as we can see the ticket sales, security admissions, and entrance areas shown right here. And here's a closer look at the admission sales and guest services building in the entrance plaza. Now, once in Epic Universe, this will be a shop building and we can see the progress on the water feature that will greet guests as they enter the park. And this is a closer look at the water feature, which has made a lot of progress in recent weeks since our last update. All right, before we wrap up our Epic Universe construction update, let's check out the progress on the two hotels that will sit just outside the park and the in-park hotel. Now we know the two hotels outside the park are called Stella Nova and Terra Luna Resorts. Here we are looking at the colorful reflective tiles over at the Stella Nova Resort, which looks to be just about done with the tiles being installed as it is further along in its construction than Terra Luna. And we know this is a fact because the Stella Nova Resort is planned to open about a month before the Terra Luna Resort is. And over at the Stella Nova Resort, we have the Portica Share here where we can see panes of glass had been recently added to the lobby entrance. Now over at the Terra Luna Resort, we can see progress on the reflective tiles is not as far along as Stella Nova, but is making progress. And here is the progress on the pool area over at the Terra Luna Resort. And if you recall, we have seen concept art of what the a recreation and pool areas will look like at both Stella Nova and Terra Luna. So we can always compare these to that as they're being constructed to see how those come along. Now, moving over to the in park hotel, we see the park facing entrance and exit area is really starting to come along and is looking a lot like the concept art. At the top of the hotel, there is a yellow truss at the center, which is being assembled to support the construction of the dome that will sit on top of the hotel Again, like we can see in the concept art here. So the in-park hotel is looking a lot like the concept art that we've shown. Now over in the pool area of the in-park hotel, we can see some progress on the pool bar area. And what seemed like in the last update that there were going to be two pools in this area, it seems there is just going to be one large pool, which does make more sense given we have seen this sort of pool area in other universal hotels. But just as a note, Universal hotels are actually managed by Lowe's. So technically, I guess you could say these are all Lowe's hotels, but they are on Universal Studios property. Well, that's going to do it for this Epic Universe construction update. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel before you leave, as we will be doing more Epic Universe construction updates and land previews as construction continues. And here at Capture the Magic, we have informational videos to help you have the best time when heading to Universal Studios and or Disney World on your next vacation. And over on the Capture the Magic podcast, we discuss all things Universal Studios and Disney World in much greater details. You can check that out on YouTube or at CTM Podcast or wherever you listen to podcasts. So what are your guesses about the opening timeline for Epic Universe? You think it'll open in the summer of 2025? Sooner than that? Later than that? Let us know in the comments. But until next time, we will see you in the parks.